So the big question is, will it do a burnout? I mean, a 48 Buick with a Dynaflow could never do a burnout. Let's give it a try. Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Tonight we're featuring a 1948 Buick Super, or a derelict as it's called. I'll explain what that means in just a minute. This is the latest trend. This is like the hottest thing right now, these derelict cars. Cars that appear to be uh, derelict cars, but have modern drivetrains with very sophisticated uh, brakes, steering, suspension system. Plus, I like cars that look like my wardrobe. You know, this is, people always complain about what I wear, but see, when I stand next to this, I feel like I'm in a tuxedo. Uh, Jonathan Ward is the guy who came up with this whole derelict thing. He's been on our website a few times, probably as much as anybody, and this is his uh, latest creation. Let, let's meet him. Jonathan, come on in. How are you? Good to see you. Good. You too, Jay. Thanks I for love what me you're back. doing. I, you know, this is so funny to me because you have a classic car that you can do this and you don't have to polish it, you don't have to do anything to it. Liberating. Yeah, except just drive the heck out of it. And it's uh and it looks like a 48 <laughs> 48 Buick, but the powertrain is what? We're running the LS9 from the ZR1. ZR1 to, uh, Corvette. 4 l 85 e And then uh, Art Morrison chassis. Yeah. And on and on and on. Well, how much fun is it to blow off BMWs and Porsches and everything mm. with a 48 Buick? It's it's hilarious, and there's really nothing that gives it away. A few little tiny things, but you've managed to integrate those uh, very, very nicely. So you what? You find the car, and then you find a customer, or a customer comes to you with a car. How does it work? Usually, customer first, then the car, then find the car and start the engineering. Right. In this case, I would actually been looking for a Roadmaster convertible right. for another client. Right. Stumbled into this car, and said, so, oh my gosh, I just fell in love with it, so I bought it. Right. And it's funny, we found it back in Pennsylvania on Craigslist, and it had been in a garage for so long, we had to have a tree cut to get the garage door open and yank it out. So I bought it just because I took one look at a photo of it and fell in love with it. Was it running at the time? No, okay. no it had been sitting uh, literally for decades. I think the last registration sticker on it was from the 70s. Oh, okay. But when we brought it out to the shop, uh, serendipity uh, is my friend, I guess, because right. a client was visiting, looking at his Bronco that we were building, an Icon BR, saw this, said, oh my gosh, that's just too cool. And then he bought it right on the spot, literally oh, okay. as it was unloading. So serendipity is not a stripper. That is actually... Correct. Correct. Okay, yeah. okay, good, good. <laughs> Could I, be. It, it depends on the situation, yeah, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, no. <laughs> All right, very cool. So, I mean, and you've left everything pretty much the way... <laughs> the way yeah, I mean, is. like, what we'll do is we'll... We take it in the shop, we liberate the body from the chassis, brace it, and then we'll scan it to get the, the spatial data into the computer. Mm -hmm. So then when we work with Art Morrison on the chassis, we can design the rails to fit specific to the body. And then we you know, pick our favorite suspension and powertrain elements, but then digitally test and realize all of that. Because like GM now will get of us the CAD file for the engine and right. we can really package everything down to the gas tank before we actually start physically working on it. And what is the transmission? We're running the 4L85E, the Supermatic. Okay. About the only thing that'll handle this much power. Was that available with the ZR1? There was no automatic that Correct, it saying. would have been a transaxle mount for the ZR1. Okay, yeah. okay. But, uh, but this simple is not a adaptation. transaxle, this is Correct, regular. yeah, conventional. Okay, very you conventional. You just had to change the flywheel and party on, it's not okay. a big deal. So you just put it in drive, click it down, and, and you off go, you like, go. Like, you like the old hydromatic, yeah. yeah very and then the, the column is modern, but we went to pretty significant lengths to hide it, because one you thing- You fooled me, because one good. thing I hate, I know. and when I see a 32 Ford with a tilt, it just looks, it's not a hot rod with a tilt. If you're yeah. so fat, you have to move the steering wheel. <laughs> go on a diet. Yeah, it totally. seems ridiculous Yeah, to like me. modern gauges, a yeah, modern yeah. ugly stereo, all that stuff. No, People do power windows, those plastic switches, that stuff yeah, kills no, me. So to me, I love the look, because I, I hate it when I see a classic car in the, in the dashboard and the whole interior is modern. Yeah. I don't feel I'm in a classic car. Yeah. This feels like something I would have ridden in when I was a kid. I mean, there's some giveaway. Those speakers look you a little- You recognize those? What are those off of? 300 SL. 
Oh, those are 300 yeah. SL. Okay. That was the good. cleverest way we could think of yeah. to get the sound. And the the sort of, front, we just perforated the leather. I'm so glad you didn't put bucket seats in no, it. No, no, never. Come on, yeah, you know hilarious. me better. Yeah, and hilarious. the other cool thing, this leather specifically yeah. comes from Morin Giles, which is more known for um, like interior design leather. Right. So we talked to the client and we agreed it not being UV stable is kind of part of the fun. Yeah. yeah. So it, it just funks and gets more with the derelict finish. Yeah. The well, biggest labor though, that console, because they never had a console. Oh, right here? It was a client request, yeah. The, oh, okay. The hours that took to reshape that seat was, yeah. was just pretty ridiculous. Plus, the fascinating thing is, if this was a real 48 Buick, you have easily $25,000 worth of chrome here, don't you? Yeah. To do, I mean, yeah. easy. easily. Yeah. I mean, chrome is very expensive now because of the EPA and all that kind of stuff. So. Honey, we're saving. When you explain to the wife, honey, we're saving because we're not doing the chrome, you see. So we're saving a lot of money there. The fact that we have an Art Morrison chassis and all that yeah, stuff. It's, it's all about the balance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you see, so you're not wasting a lot of money on chrome. And there's really, you really can't wash this or maybe you clean the windshield. That's it. That, that's about it. And then you just drive it. It's and we do like pretty shiny versions we call reformers, but the derelicts are just so much fun. Because like you yeah. said, you're not afraid of it. Your kids can... Climb in, you, you get a ding on the door on a curb or whatever. You see a dirt road, you can hang the ass out sideways and party right, on. You're right. not like tiptoeing around it. And what are the brakes? What brakes do you have? Uh, we're running Willwood, so okay. six piston front, four piston rear, two piece hat rotors. And then we had to CNC those wheels to be able to pull that off. Yeah. Which is one of the bigger challenges with the derelicts is not jumping the shark, so to speak, yeah, with a ZR rim tire pad. Yeah, the wheels kind of give you away. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah the tires so it's a delicate away. balance. But we like Willwood. We use them quite a bit. Yeah, great Let's product. open the hood and sure. show them what we got here. Just, uh, it you opens know the, the drill. Same, same, well, there you go. Yep. All right. That goes up. Uh. You notice even the wiper motor is a modern Delco three-speed with delay. We kept the original linkage, updated the oh, blades, but yeah. it's all electronic okay. control now. All right, you got a little Buick, hilarious. Yeah, it was fun. We lifted the fireball font and the crest yeah, to try yeah. and get the ZR1. And of course, modern, as I said, Willwood yeah. Master with, dual, you know, not a single piston or any of that nonsense. Nope. And it's a dry sump too. Well, yeah, yeah. ZR1. We, we yeah, left the yeah. air to water intercooler and dry sump. I guess I realized a lot of builders avoid the complexity of that and convert them to a wet sump. Yeah. But it seemed like the right thing to do for longevity. And what's the horsepower here? Just under seven. Yeah, it <laughs> so, is so much fun. So this should be equal to a Hellcat pretty close. Oh, yeah. Huh? yeah. <laughs> I love that. It's hilarious. I mean, just blowing off. It's hilarious. I just like making you giggle. It's a funny sound. Uh, it just makes me laugh. And I always <laughs> loved these when I was a kid, the spot. These are like illegal now. You can't have these anymore. And that was such a pain, too, because we can obviously it's all mil spec 12 volt. But that is from our electric bike, the E-Flyer. It's yeah. our headlight, so it's now an LED control. Yeah, no, these are great. Oh, yeah. look, and you got the mirror on. Yeah, it was factory on the car. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Very nice. Big radiator. Does nobody, has it got air conditioning? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Full in-dash AC and then power windows, but we use the later Buick Century right. switches, so we have okay. a four-gang control on the drivers. Otherwise, they were hydraulic, and you had to do the reach-around. Yeah. Did you ever make a hubcap that could fit that? Yeah, the... Um, we st we, we're trying a couple different techniques. So those are spun stainless, and then we take the original font, create a vector yeah. file, and then acid etch it into the stainless so yeah. it, it's dimensioned. If anything gave the car away, it would be yeah. the wheel. Because the rear, you're okay because you've yeah, got the Yeah, the spats the hide it. But, but, but with that, you kind of go, hey, wait a, wait a minute. But you know, the, the partner we use for these wheels is Circle Racing here in Cali. So they're CNC 6061. And they're starting to realize what we're up to and yeah. now kind of getting off menu. Yeah, yeah. So like that 58 rolls derelict we're doing, we're machining the wheel to receive the factory cap so it's completely invisible. Okay, very so. cool. And uh, let's move to the back of the car here now. Obviously fuel here. Is, now is this a whole modern? Yeah, from that area all the way through. So modern stainless tank, in tank, factory pump, yada, yada, yada. And a funny thing with these cars, Originally at freeway speeds, the, those gas caps, despite the spring, would kind of flap in the wind. Yeah. So when we built the modern sealed neck and cap, we boxed in that area. Oh, okay. We didn't at first, and on the freeway, I'm like, what is that noise? We look behind us, and about <laughs> 90, funny. it's flapping around. All right, now there's the famous Icon Lizard. That's your little... Uh... Yeah, he goes on everything we build, yeah. one, one place or another. 
Kind of like Hitchcock showing up in his own movies. Yeah. That kind of deal. <laughs> okay. Now you have a, a reversing, is there a camera here? Yeah. Yeah, we milled it into the center of the super, and okay. then that ties to the double din in the so dash. It's your backup camera, and well, I can't even see the screen is. We'll find that later. Yeah. And then you have your manly full-size trunk here. Yeah, that's pretty straightforward, other than we ran out of room for the battery up in the right. nose, and then the amplifiers and base modules are back here. <laughs> right, good. And you can see the polyurea. So it's kind of a neat thing that we learned to do on these. When we blow the body apart after we pre-fit the new mm -hmm. chassis and everything raw, we put the body on a rotisserie, and after we strip it and rust mort it, we coat it with this heat-cured polyurea on the bottom. The polyurea, that sounds like some sort of disease you get from food poisoning. What yeah, is it's, it's, it's a venereal issue. Uh, is, it, it like a, is it like a plastic? Is yeah, it, basically. And uh, it's it like a bed what? liner, oh, but okay. it's the more intelligent of the bed liners. Most of those are polyurethane, but Linex is polyurethane. Yeah, oh, okay. it goes on with a heat cure gun. Oh, very cool. And it okay. really does a lot to it protect just it and everything. quiet yeah. it down. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Trunk light and everything? Yep. Was this originally a 12 volt or a 6 volt car? 6. Okay, so you convert it obviously to 12. And you have the period license plate as well. These were hard to find. This car didn't come with them, but the oh. holes were there in the body already. Yeah. But we finally scored those online in the right ratty sort of condition. I think it's time to take it for a ride. Before we take it for a drive, let's go over everything. Obviously, speedometer. Now, the gauges are all appear to be original, but I imagine what? They have modern innards? You guessed it. Yeah. So we didn't even, we really just blew them off and cleaned them and put them back together. But on the back side, it's all modern VDO guts and internals. Right. Same with the clock. And this is a, a tilt wheel, which is yep. available back in the day. Correct. So I did it uh, wheel, but then we did the patina to try and get it to blend. And then we modified, remachined the hub to accept the old wheel. Yeah. Because again, like I hate that when you see yeah. like a modern and what's racer this here? wheel. This is That's the wiper control. A wiper control. Yeah, we kept the original knob. Isn't okay. that strange though? It looks like an afterthought. Yeah, it but does. That's factory. It does. Okay, now this is uh, the original radio. Yep. But obviously. Yep. Original clock, now 12 volt quartz. Okay. And then this has all been modified, but subtly. So modern switches for, you know, lights, fog, lighter, fan, temp, and vent. Right. Our AC vents are all hidden under oh, yeah, dash because I don't want to see them. And where's our camera? Where's the, oh, look at that. Good day, Mr. Bond. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. So that does your navigation, Bluetooth, music management, wow, and all that modern cool. stuff. But then you don't have to look at it. Yeah. And the cool thing is, you know, those AM radio in this day, it's a beast. Yeah. So just by gutting and getting rid of that yeah. gave us so much room to put the big AC module in. All right. And electric windows, power seat. Power yeah, top. Yeah. Like, what is we, this? Was that a compass? Yeah, it's a funny story. The, this car, all this paint is original, right? And there was literally looked like someone had taken a chisel and a mallet and blown holes through here for gosh knows what reason. But it was killing me because I didn't want to paint it. So Tim, the owner of the car, found this online and bought it. I think it's supposed to be an accessory for like an early Chevy. Oh, okay. So then we created the housing, got it in there, and then patinaed it. And actually, just this week, I found a guy in Maine who rebuilds these old compasses. Okay. So thus far, no matter what, you're always going always north. Always going north. Always okay. north. Well, Which could be worse. Up. Just standard. Uh, yeah, now, what is standard this party. Power? What is this power? That's the power top. Oh, of course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like a 48 Buick. Yeah, yeah, that's a 48 Buick. <laughs> this thing is hilarious. Remember that scene in Rocky where the mousy girl takes off her glasses and suddenly she, she's beautiful? That's kind of what this is like. Has it got positive traction? Yeah. Yeah. What is the rear end anyway? Well, it's, it's a strange nine with fine spline. What is the ratio? 373? Well, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think uh, I did 373 in it. It's a freeway flyer. And it's a six speed, right? Yeah. yeah. A five no, speed. wait, no, four. Four leaf five is still a four. Oh, it's a four speed. Yeah. yeah. I want to get into the 6L90Es, but uh, the electrical integration and durability can't touch the rating of this one. Yeah, yeah. So I haven't gone there yet. It, it handles fantastic. It's hilarious because it doesn't look like it I should totally handle it at all. I totally <laughs> I was flogging it on Mulholland with my kids oh, this oh, weekend. Yeah, yeah, hilarious. And no flex at all. You said these. Cars were famous for cracking windshields, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So we really overbuilt the chassis. We did right. four by six main rails to snug it up. You know, it'd be funny to just get a little old lady and put her in this car and have her drive around blowing off Porsches and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you 
You know, this is such a great idea, this whole derelict thing, because you don't, what's your biggest problem when you have a classic car? Oh, you can't park it anywhere. Somebody's gonna bump it or ding it or something. And here you've got all the performance of a ZR1 Corvette in, the, in this ridiculous 48 Buick. Hilarious. And it's really comfortable. I mean, you have basically the same horsepower as you have in a new Hellcat. How funny would that be blowing a Hellcat off in one of these? It's got such a great presence. The patina is just perfect. It's got a sports car chassis. Let's take it up in the hill, see how it handles. It would be funny to blindfold a car guy, put him in this car, and say, what are we driving now? I, they'd never guess. That would be funny. You know, the Singer boys test their Porsches up here. Oh, Rob does? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it'd be fun to uh, come up on find him, a Porsche coming through here and just hop on his tail and stay there and go, <laughs> wow, what, a, what are we doing here? You look like a crazy guy pulling up behind Porsches and stuff in this. Just. You ever think of doing four on the tree? Like a manual four yeah, on the yeah, tree? How yeah. about six on the tree? That would be fun, right? Six on the tree. That would be, be a nice, good. complex situation. If this was an actual 48 Buick, we wouldn't be able to catch that bus that just went by. <laughs> I like this door squeaking. It adds a little bit of. Really? It drives me nuts. Oh, yeah, trying to kill that chipmunk. Just here, it just adds a bit a little of, fun. makes you realize you're in an old car. <laughs> I gotta say, this is one of the most fun cars I've ever driven because you can just beat the heck out of it because you can't really scratch it or damage it. And with this uh, modern chassis, it's, it's a ZR1 Corvette that looks like a 48, <laughs> looks like a 48 Buick. It's hilarious how well it handles. And when people look in the rearview mirror, they go, what? What, what, what is that thing coming up behind me? Just hilarious. Let's take it up on the freeway. Let's, uh, we'll put our foot in and see how she goes. Hilarious. Yeah. I love this thing. Doesn't bottom out. Suspension is terrific. Just all kinds of power. You know, this car does you, does make you rethink that whole restoration thing. You know, Dolly Parton used to have a great line in her act. She said, it costs a lot of money to look this cheap. And that's, that's, that's kind of what this is. It costs a lot of money to look this bad. The so big question is, will it do a burnout? I mean, a 48 Buick with a Dynaflow could never do a burnout. Let's give it a try. Oh, here's the owner. Hi, Tim. Hey, how's it going, Jay? Uh, Tim, you weren't supposed to see that. Sorry about yeah, your tire. Wasn't, yeah. wasn't, yeah. wasn't sure about that. <laughs> this is Tim Vess. He owns the car. Are you happy with this thing? I love the car. It's, it, it really is a lot of fun. It's hilarious. It handles, it stops, it does burnouts. It's great. It, uh, <laughs> it really is terrific. Tim, thanks for being a good sport. Hey, thank thanks you, for bringing Jerry. your glad, car. Glad Jonathan, you thank you. Thank, thank you, buddy. You. Yeah, and we'll see you guys next week.